Welcome back to another episode of the Statues Podcast. I'm your host, Janang. For today's episode, I wanted to talk about something that I was asked earlier on in the week. A friend of mine asked me what I'd look for when I scout for artists or when I look for people to work with for certain projects. And I think this question was, it came in such a perfect time with the rise of independent artistry and everything that is going on when it comes to independent artists trying to find independent management or trying to network. I wanted to share my knowledge with you guys. Take it as whatever you would like, but this is what's worked for me and honestly hasn't failed me. I've worked with some of the most amazing people and they've gone off to do some of the most amazing things. For today's episode, let's get into that. When it comes to what I look for in an artist, there are only a few things. They're not very complicated. Number one, I look for work ethic over talent. Number two, I look for confidence and yet being humble. And number three, I look for someone who is willing to grow. Those three things are all I look for. So when it comes to work ethic over talent, one of the reasons why I look for that is because you might have the talent, but without the work ethic, you'll be a one-hit wonder. Without work ethic, your fans will hate you. Without work ethic, producers, directors, managers, people that you want to network with won't want to be near you. Work ethic drives everything in this industry. Or if you don't have the work ethic to continue, maybe um, maybe a small flame that you have, maybe the momentum that you have, then no one's going to care. How many artists come out on a daily basis with platforms like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Independent artistry has become a thing where people have been able to monetize off of it, live off of it, and it's not for the weak. Independent artistry is hard. It comes with a lot of sacrifice. And if you don't have the work ethic to tie up to what you want, then you're not going to make it in this industry. That's just the reality of it. The second thing, confidence and yet still being humble. When it comes to being an artist, when it comes to working in entertainment, you have to have confidence. I used to be able to walk up to random artists that I would see like uh, singing on the side of the road and just be like, hey, you got a great voice. I'd love to, I'd love to have a meeting with you. I'd love to chat with you. And boom, a relationship is born. Whether or not something happens, it was never about that. It's about building that relationship, building that confidence inside of you. You need that confidence. You have to have confidence and still be humble. When I talk to artists, what I look for the most is if this artist is willing to listen to me. When an artist is willing to listen, then there is room for growth on both ends. I learn from the artist and the artist can learn from me. Whatever I can give to the artist, the artist will give back as much. I want to see when an artist picks up a mic or when an artist is in front of the mic, the confidence that they exude knowing that they are amazing at what they do. You can question what you do and that's okay. That's what an artist is supposed to do. You're supposed to question if, is this line okay? Is my voice okay? Is, do I sound okay? You're supposed to question that. That's a part of what being an artist is about. But when you're in front of that mic, all of those questions go away. And you sing like you own the room. You own the stage. And then when you come down from it, it's that moment of you have your high. Now you're down. And there's that quality that I look for in an artist. I love to see humble artists. I love to see artists that cherish their talent. Artists that cherish their moments. The third one is whether they're willing to grow and listen. 
an artist can only go so far on their own. It takes a lot of outside influence to either teach you something or push you somewhere. A lot of that comes with experience. So you have to be willing to listen. And sometimes, sometimes you're going to do stuff that you don't want to do. And you have to gauge whether or not it's worth the risk for you. I, I think it may have been back in 2015 or 2016. I had an artist manager. And at that time, I was rapping. And I was going through... I was going through some record label deals and some publishing deals at that time. And I decided to let my artist manager go because we didn't see eye to eye on certain things. You know, years later, as you grow and as you become someone who understands this industry, there was a lot of regret on my half. But you live and you learn and you grow. And that's the one thing, right? It's like, you can regret, but did you learn anything? Because I learned so much because of that incident. When it comes down to being independent artist, it is going to be difficult. There are going to be a lot of challenges that you're going to face. And the reality of that is, you're up against artists every day. Every day that passes by is a new artist that joins the race. And where you might think you might be in the middle of that race, the honest part of that is you're probably not. You're probably still right at the beginning. You're right next to everyone. All these artists are coming out. On a daily basis, I at least hear five, five to like eight new artists on my Spotify, on YouTube, on TikTok. And they're all amazing all amazing so that's who you're up against your battle is against all these other artists that are hungry for the same thing that you're hungry for this mindset that everyone has like i'm gonna be the best hundreds of these people have the same mentality but eventually these artists get burnt out They get burnt out because they're not willing to listen. They're not willing to expand their network. When I work with people, I like to change up who our director is, who we record with, the studio that we're recording at. And by doing so, it gives me that network. It allows for me to work with people that I'm not familiar with. Whether or not we use the material that we got from them or not, it was about building that relationship in the moment. And we built that relationship over years of working together. Something that I really wanted to talk about when it comes to independent artistry and being a manager for independent artists is there is a reality that comes with what we do. And that reality is 90 to 95% of the artists that you take on will eventually stop. If you're like me, I take on very young artists, so I take on artists anywhere from the ages of 16, 15, to their 20s, mid-20s. And by doing that, you have to understand that in that age range, they're figuring out their lives. They're still in school. And maybe by the time they're 18 and they they get that time to go to college, they've figured out what they want to do. And the reality of it is, music is a hobby. But it is my job during the time that I have them to fulfill their needs and their desires as an artist, to leave them with a great understanding that they did the best that they could while they were in the position that they were in. Of the artists that I've worked with, I think only one or two have truly gone off to continue music. We still keep in touch. We have a great relationship. But of the many other artists that I've worked with, and I'm talking about like 90% of them, they're no longer in music. You know, they've gone off to be dentists. They've gone off to be teachers. And that's okay. That, that's a part of life. You're supposed to figure out life. It's my job to guide you through that process while you're with me. 
It's also my job to make sure that you enjoy that phase of your life while you're in it. When you're an artist, especially an independent artist, there's a lot of, I don't want to say stigma, but there is a lot of concern that if I get started, what if I don't like it? Am I wasting this guy's time? Am I wasting this person's time? And I just want to say to those that those artists that you're not, you're not wasting anyone's time. You've built our repertoire. You've built our resume. You've built our knowledge to better ourselves for the next artist that we take, that we work with. Knowledge is never ending. And working with different artists allows for us to continue growing as managers, as CEOs and owners. And when it comes down to each individual artist that I've worked with, I love and I care for each and every single one, even the ones that I, you know, we may not have ended off on the, on the right terms or ones that we have and they've gone off to do big things. It was my job to be there and I hope that that's what I could have done for everyone. I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for dropping in to this episode. I hope that you guys take away something from this episode. It wasn't scripted. I kind of just wanted to talk about it, see what came out of it. And I hope that you guys learned something from it. Uh, to all those independent artists, um, if you guys are looking for a manager, if you guys are just looking for guidance, you guys can go ahead and email me. Uh, the email link is down below. It's statuescollective at gmail.com. Just go ahead and email. We can talk. It doesn't matter. But I hope and I wish all of you the best. This is a doggy dog world. But you guys are the best and you guys will get to where you want to be. Thank you guys so much. This is your host signing off. Bye bye, guys.